Luca scores! Backhander scores! Way in, and he scored! Dojewski, one on one, Dojewski scores! Slide pass, they score! Shoot, score! Beat Falvin under the glove! We're even! On a Saturday night from Big Boy Arena in Frazier, Michigan, it's game two of the Empire Division semifinals between the number two Motor City Rockers and your number three Danbury Hattricks. Hattricks playoff hockey is live right here on the Hattricks Digital Network. Hello again, Hattricks fans. Doug Latuka joined by Patrick Fournette, the man standing to my left and running the camera for us here in Michigan. Our first trip to Big Boy Arena this season and it is do or die time for the hat tricks, Pat. Danbury, losers in overtime yesterday. Final minutes of the first overtime. The Rockers scoring a goal in tight. Hat tricks put up a valiant effort, but tonight their playoff aspirations of defending their cup and making FPHL history and being the only team to go back to back is up for grabs. They've got to win one tonight to advance to tomorrow and then hopefully take care of business in game three. Yeah, Doug, I mean, it's it's been an interesting, you know, I guess 24 hour span of events. Having last night's game at home go into overtime, you know, given kind of a special surprise for us as it's the first game of the round going into overtime. We almost thought it would go into double OT. I mean, it was almost right there. However, the battle between Babbitt and McCollum ended up with you know, Babbitt and the Rockers getting the win, advancing to tonight back at home with both teams going on a bus ride of about 10 to 11 hours in length to now play this game here. I mean, I'm excited to see what's going to happen to them. Well, it's the definition of the FPHL, right? These guys will do anything and everything to put on the product of the fans and to come away with a victory. We saw the definition, really, of playoff hockey yesterday. Great starting net minding, and one or two mistakes ends up in the back of your net. Correct. We'll hit on the goaltending first. You had two of the best in the league in Trevor Babin for the Rockers and Connor McCollum for the Hattricks. McCollum's 24 wins in the regular season, the most of any goaltender in the league. Trevor Babin, spectacular as well, was top five in goals against average and save percentage in the regular campaign and got calls up to Kalamazoo a couple of times throughout the regular season where he was elevated. So you saw both of those goalies flashing the leather. Both gloves were on display last night. It was a combined 114 shots on goal. Babin with 61 saves. McCollum stopped 48. Tonight, can they replicate that, Pat? I think so. I mean, you and I have been talking about this um, almost all day. It's really, we kind of feel that we might have a repeat of last night. Obviously, we're hoping in our favor this time going around. But it's, again, exhilarating hockey. And you have two goalies that really just know how to stop that puck. And again, lapses in defense are kind of what killed both sides last night in terms of preventing those goals from happening and preventing overtime from happening. Yeah, the Hattricks had a 2-0 lead about midway through the second period. And Motor City with three unanswered goals. One in the second, one in the third. And the overtime winner, TJ Sneath, in the low slot. Got to take the take feed and beat McCollum over the outstretched glove to give Motor City a 1-0 series lead. Now, for the Hattricks, this is their first trip to Michigan this season. The last time Danbury played here at Big Boy Arena, it was last year, November 18th and 19th, 2022. So two years ago last yes. season, of course, at the beginning of the year. Completely different rosters on both sides. Hattricks did win both of those games in overtime, ironically. Both of these teams 
as even as it can be throughout the year. We spoke about goal differential a bunch last year and how they were just one off from each other, dueling it out for number two spot in the Empire Division all season long. So we expect another tight contest between these two teams tonight. And we wonder, will fatigue play a factor? Long bus rides for both of these squads. Overtime, they played late into that 20-minute overtime. So that will be something to keep tabs on in the early five, 10 minutes of the first period. See who has their legs and who does not. Rockers being announced to the ice. We are just about ready for the anthem here at Big Boy Arena in uh, Fraser, Michigan. We'll give you the hat trick starters as they're lined up on the blue line. It is Colby Johnson with Nick DiNicola, who is back in the lineup, did not play yesterday. DiNicola and Chase Harwell centers that line. On defense, it is the steady veteran pair of Kyle Gonzalez and Xavier Abdella. And getting the nod in net for the Danbury Hattricks, it's Connor McCullum trying to duplicate what he did last night. So it is time for the anthem here in Big Boy Arena. Let's tune in. them in the books and game two just moments away number two Motor City and number three Danbury in the second game of this best of three Hattricks need to win to force a game three tomorrow night here inside Big Boy Arena rockers in the black jerseys black pants and the black socks with the purple and white stripes the Rockers starting Pavel Svitsnov, TJ Delaney, Josh Colton, Danny Vanderweel, and Jonathan Giuliano with Trevor Babin in goal. Hattricks starting Nick DiNicola with Chase Harwell and Colby Johnson. Kyle Gonzalez and Xavier Abdella are on the back end, and Connor McCollum mans the net. A must win for the Hattricks to force a game three, and we are underway. Hattricks in the orange tops, black bottoms, and the orange socks with the white and black striping moving left to right in the opening frame. A scrum behind the net. Puck pops to the far corner. Nick DiNicola, healthy scratch last night, back in playing with his good friend Chase Harwell centering the line with the 6-3 
College rookie Colby Johnson plays offsides. A late whistle there as Vanderweel brought it in. And a whistle, 34 seconds in. Now this the first trip up to Michigan for the Hattricks this season. Last time Danbury was here in Frazier, it was November of 2022, so early last season in Motor City's inaugural year. LaBelle's point shot ramps off the stick and into the netting. So a face-off to the right of Trevor Babin. Catches with the right hand, made 61 saves last night in Motor City's game one win. Overtime victory for the Rockers. T.J. Sneath received a pass in the low slot, lifted it over the glove of McCullum to send the Rockers back to Michigan with a 1-0 lead in the series. Long range shot, pinballs off the back glass. It swung around and kept in at the right point. To the near side, a centering pass all the way through and back out to center. Nicholas McGill-Diaz wears 11 for the Rockers, chugs the legs, gets the red line, rims it around. Deflected by McCullum. LaBelle lofts it out to center. It's swatted back in, and the Hattricks reorganize. About a minute and a half in, first period, no score. Hattricks and Rockers... We mentioned off the top, we keep an eye out for fatigue between these two teams. They put on over 25 shots in the first period combined last night. Both goalies were certainly tested and were up for the challenge. And Pat, so far it seems like these teams Trying to avoid making mistakes, filling each other out, and making the smart play exactly what you think would happen in playoff hockey. Absolutely, Doug. I mean, just in these first few minutes alone, I mean, these two teams look like they didn't even have a bus ride in between. Playing some dominant hockey, getting some good opportunities, trying to feel themselves out again, get the feeling back of being in the big boy arena. Carrying through center, it's Avery Smith up the left wing, halted by Steve Brown, who rainbows it out to center. Gloved down by Colton, who lost possession, then poke checks it to the far boards. And the Rockers reset, get partial changes. A hop past Brown, here's Giuliano, swooping around the net, wrap around, tries, stopped by McCollum as he got to the far post, got the left pad there, and made the save. McCollum, 48 saves last night for the Hattricks. He has been superb for Danbury. Mentioned his 24 wins in the regular season. Led the FPHL. He started 16 of the last 23 games for the Hattricks. And in his last seven, he's had a 931 save percentage or better. Playing his best hockey at the right time. And many thought Taylor Joseph would be the surefire starter after Danbury acquired him from Columbus at the deadline, but McCullum stepped up and has the nod in game two after a stellar performance in a losing effort in game one. Puck was available at the blue line. Giuliano sends it back. Vanderweel leads the break. Giuliano throws it off of the skate of Abdella. Delaney up the right wing, centers. Cunningham got there, chops the puck to the near side. And Delaney pirouettes out to center ice. With two and a half, with three and a half minutes gone in the opening period. Shot from the right circle, was gloved by McCullum. And no rebound for the 27-year-old goaltender out of Pickering, Ontario, Canada. Face off at the far circle. Berry wins it against Sneath, who had the game-winning goal yesterday for the Rockers. Ratcliffe centers. LaBelle shoots wide. Babin might have got a piece. Bedard pinches at the right point. 
and Connor Woolley reinstated in the lineup. Connects with LaBelle, and it's snapped back in. It's shoveled into the hat trick zone. Racing after the puck, Declan Conway. It's steered aside by McCollum. And a three on three through the neutral zone. Woolley chugs the legs, veers at the blue line, hands off Berry. Wrist shot, whistles wide, and rims all the way out to center ice. Here's Nick Gulo into the offensive zone. Centering try, ramped off the stick at the right point, a slap shot. Blocker safe for McCollum. Another try, McGill Diaz. And that was fought off. Miguel Diaz dancing at the left point. Feathers it into the skates. It's Gulo below the goal line. Worked on by Berry. Brown supports. Can't clear. Miguel Diaz left point. Slap shot deflected into the netting behind McCollum. And a whistle. Best shift of the day for the Rockers offensively. And the Hattricks holding their ground. Bend, but did not break on that shift. Absolutely, Doug. I mean, you, you know, you tend to get worried in situations like that. However, McCollum knows how to hold the zone, and defense was able to play their position well and just really hold it down. Patrick's had a couple of prime opportunities yesterday. They had a goal disallowed, or waved off. Babin had his glove on the puck as it trickled near the goal line. That one in front, chested down by McCollum. Kept at the line, a snapper. Went past the stick of Svitsnov. Redirects Giuliano's bid. Pops in the air to the far side corner. Delaney guarding the puck from Abdella. They clash along the boards, and it spits out to Johnson. Johnson, fended off by Colton, gets to the puck first. Centers, bouncing puck on goal, and Babin Holtz play, gets a whistle, and the first media timeout here at Big Boy Arena in Fraser, Michigan. No score, 14.30 remaining. Opening period will step aside of the Hattricks Digital Network. Stop by TK's American Cafe on White Street in Danbury and try one of their 76 amazing wing flavors. Visit tksamericancafe.com for more information. Danbury Parking Authority. Park in the Patriot Garage across the street from the Danbury Ice Arena. It's safe, secure, and legal. Make sure the only ticket you get is to the game. Danbury Chiropractic and Wellness. Dr. Jared DiLorenzo is a proud member of the Danbury Hattricks medical team. Stop by and see them on North Street in downtown Danbury. Feeling good is an option, and they can get you there. Buzz Aid Appliance Scratch and Dent Outlet is the local leader for appliances and household wares. Do you like to eat? They have a refrigerator. Do you want clean clothes? They have a washer. They got it all. It's Buzz Aid Appliance. Coca-Cola is the official beverage of the Danbury Hattricks. Sweet, fizzy goodness. As refreshing as you remember. We welcome you back inside Big Boy Arena in Fraser, Michigan. Game two of the Empire Division semifinals. Number two, Motor City, and number three, Danbury. Hattricks in a do-or-die spot. They need a win to force a game three tomorrow. That would be a 5.05 puck drop here in Michigan. Doug Latuka alongside Patrick Fournette. We appreciate you stopping by on the Hattricks Digital Network. No score, and we've played five and a half minutes in the opening period. Off the faceoff, Lane King springs off the near boards. Slips it back for Ryan Rotundi. Bouncing puck. He juggled it momentarily. Corrals and sprints up the right side. Tried to get through Bedard. He turned him aside. And McKittrick's outlet. Sky pops into the air. Then plops down. And LaBelle in his own territory goes D to D. Charlie Bedard returned to the Hattricks in mid-March after a stint in the SPHL. Has been as steady as it gets on the back end, paired with Josh LaBelle. Patrick's top four has been solidified for the last couple of weeks. And now that Jared Yao is back in the mix, he's dealing with an injury, he solidifies things even more. Barry wraparound try, fought off by Babin. Quick passing, Woolley right side, centers behind Barry. And Conway lifts the stick of the Hattricks rookie. And Conway fires it in deep. McCollum out of the goal. Rockers making changes. 
And Bedard with room to operate, zigzags through center and floats it to the left of Babbitt. Comes out of the goal, rims it around the kick plate. Smith plays back and Vanderweel angles it off the boards. Sent right back in by the 35-year-old Steve Brown. And a whistle. And I believe in offsides. On the hat trick, forces the faceoff back out to center. The starters out there, at least the trio of Harwell, Johnson, and Di Nicola. It's Yao and Brown on defense. Hat trick start the rush from left to right. Johnson cuts inside, lost the handle, bouncing puck in on goal. Then Johnson goes flying into the net. Babin with a shove to him. And a little bit of what we expected. This third line very feisty for the hat tricks. Especially Harwell and Johnson, but don't discount Dina Cola as well. They can all mix things up. And number 72. Yes, the netminder for the Rockers has been known to fly off the edge. Babin in the regular season had the most penalty minutes of any goaltender in the league. 82, it was 65 more than the next goaltender. So Pat might be smart to get under his skin, especially after he put up one of his best performances of the year last night so coincidental minors it's dina cola and gulo in the box for roughing so we play four on four or rather it's five on five they did not go to four on four still five on five hockey and mccullum covers Fourth meeting of the year between these two teams. They split back in early December, and then last night, the Rockers winning in overtime. So two of the first three games had finished past regulation. And if you look at all time, four of the seven have gone into extra time. McKittrick with a wrister right into the catching mitt of Trevor Babin. No rebound. Doug, I did want to point out something pretty interesting, although it might not be the best time. This also marks Nick Nicola's first playoff game as a hat trick. Granity playing in the, you know, the establishing season for the team, but there was no playoff due to COVID-19. So this is actually his first ever hat trick playoff game, which is, I'd say, pretty cool to see. Many thought he would get the nod last night. Did not happen. Hattrick's head coach Billy McCreary going in a different direction. And now he's got number 18 in orange back on the third line with Harwell and Johnson. Right now it's Ratcliffe Berry out there. It is four on four. So for some reason it seemed like they were on five on five before. But it is four on four hockey, which makes sense with the... Uh, Roughing minors to both teams. Well, potentially that could have been just the mistake of these two teams. They play a five-on-five five build. So obviously in a four-on-four four situation, that may not have looked different to you. It's a great nugget on Dina Cola. We were talking about Babin and how the hat tricks were preparing for him during the week. Now, Danbury knew it was going to play Motor City for about a month. It just was not determined what the seeds were going to look like as the Hattricks probe in the offensive zone. Outside wrist shot hit Harwell, who was camped out in front of Babin. But the Hattricks in practice all week put Andrew LaRusso in the goal. One of their developmental goaltenders did not qualify for the playoff roster, but they put the glove on his right hand to emulate Babin. 
Sharp angle shot off the chest of McCullum. That was Scott Coash, 88 in black. The Rockers leading goal and point producer in the regular season. Here's Ruiz, wrist shot, glances off the glove of Babby. Yao keeps it alive at the left point, wheels it around, Ruiz tossing his weight. He shoved Rotundi into the boards. Both players out of the box, so we return to five on five. Gulo for the Rockers, and Di Nicola for the Hattricks. They got unsportsmanlike conduct penalties following that scrum. Johnny Ruiz scored Danbury's second goal last night on a breakaway. Backhander over the mitt of Babin. The team MVP, leader in all three offensive categories. Paced the league in power play and shorthanded goals. Did Johnny Ruiz. Mr. Danbury. Havel Svitsnov could not retrieve the puck. He was offside, so the Rockers touch up as we hit the midway point. First period, no score in game two of the best of three. Barry's wrister blocked by Vanderweel and spits out to center. It's slung back in by Xavier Abdella and Danny Vanderweel, one of the captains on this Rockers squad, leads the break. Puck is ramped in, Abdella to his defensive partner, Gonzalez. And a three on three at neutral ice. Ratcliffe sends it in. Corey Cunningham, the Hattrick's rookie of the year, was in pursuit. Out to center. Coash slingshots it in to the near side boards. Puck is available. McGill Diaz kicks it down. Brown reverses. And Yao goes to tape to tape with Harwell. Gets around the check of Coash. Harwell trying to dangle through it at the last second. Miguel Diaz got his stick in there. Gulo, left wing, sends it inside, connects with the trailer. Coash had his pocket picked. Barry the other way with nine to play in the first period. Di Nicola wrist shot fought off by Babin. It was a juicy rebound, but it was swept aside. Coash, who scored the game winner in the Rockers' OT victory back on December 1st. That was the first meeting between these sides. Had two goals in that game. Conway, left wing, right into the breadbasket of McCollum. He holds on without a rebound. Still scoreless. About eight and a half minutes remaining in the first period. You're watching Danbury Hattrick's playoff hockey on the Hattrick's digital network. Coltec, the founder of Plastic Chamber Technology, is headquartered locally in Brookfield. Coltec is family owned and operated with experience in the drainage industry dating back to the 1950s. When you're talking drainage and stormwater, Coltec is the world leader. Contact them today at coltec.com. Fairfield County Bank is the official bank of the Danbury Hattricks. It's where the Hattricks bank and the tellers wear the Danbury Hattricks top hat. Fairfield County Bank is your hometown bank and a proud supporter of your hometown team. For a comfortable stay with great amenities, the only choice is the La Quinta by Wyndham and Danbury. Ask for the Hattrick's friends and family rate. You can't beat it. La Quinta. Texas Roadhouse, located on Newtown Road in Danbury, opened its doors locally in 2017 and is known for hand-cut steaks, cactus blossom, fall-off-the-bone ribs, made-from-scratch sides, and fresh-baked bread. The restaurant prides itself on its legendary food, legendary service, and legendary fun. No score between the Hattricks and the Rockers. Second game of the best of three. Hattricks need a win to keep the series alive. Off the defensive zone faceoff. It was kept in momentarily by Rotundi. Hattricks force it in deep. Top three of Cunningham, Ruiz, and McKittrick. McKittrick and Ruiz, the two goal scorers for the Hattricks last night. In the 3-2 overtime loss. Out there as well is TJ Sneath, the hero for the Rockers last night. 16-24 of the first overtime. Josh Colton, who scored last night, tried to slip it in deep. 
King at the left point. Turnaround, wrister blocked by Bedard. Colton swats it below the goal line. Sneath. Outnumbered in the corner. Centers, Delaney. Chips and chases, gets there first. Snapper off the chest protector of McCullum. Nearly went Lundquist style off the mask. And McCullum robbed Delaney on a breakaway last night. Did that a couple of times. Also got some help from the post. Both goaltenders did. Now, we only saw five goals in last night's game, but it wasn't a lack of trying from both of these teams. We mentioned over 110 shots combined. Gonzalez was tripped up at center ice, and we play on. He was looking back at the referee, wondering if there was going to be a call. But playoff hockey, things tighten up. Rockers in the offensive zone. Wrist shot from Svitsnov. Engulfed by McCollum. And he holds on. Sets up a defensive zone faceoff. Not as much running gun as we saw last night. Both teams defensively structured in the first 14 minutes or so. I will agree with that. And I mean, again, obviously fatigue does play a big factor, but it looks like the defense looks like they got more sleep than the offense. However, I don't want to say that the offense is currently asleep. However, they're getting those shots on net. Or just another passing through Babbitt or McCullum. You'd have to anticipate it was a point of emphasis for both of these teams last night. Both of these squads play sound defensive hockey, but yesterday the goaltenders really stole the show. Offense has applied the pressure. Gonzalez whips one wide. It angles near the blue line. And it's sent into the hat trick zone. Gonzalez with his head up was looking for a hat trick who was changing. So possession to the Rockers. Vander Weel all the way around the net. Back to the high slot. A lefty on his backhand. Dropping off in the far corner. Della sprints to it, reverses course. And Gonzalez, pressured by Coash, connects with Dina Cola and Berry over the center ice logo. Back to Dina Cola. Inside Johnson, wrist shot scores! Colby Johnson with a little top shelf magic. The hat tricks are on the board first. It's Colby Johnson with his first playoff goal. Danbury won. Motor City nothing. Now, Pat, we've seen it all year long with Johnson. That wicked wrister. It doesn't take a lot of room for him to unload. And he sniped it over the left shoulder of Babin. Locker side. And Danbury possesses a 1-0 lead with about five and a half minutes remaining in the opening period. And again, that was very eerily similar to last night in overtime. Almost went for that wraparound. Unfortunately, Babin was there to cover it up. But again, Johnson not afraid to drop when he has to, not afraid to go with that rip shot like you said. A scrum in the net. Brown was shoving Sneath out of the crease as he was engaged with McCullum. Johnson throwing the boom at the Rockers' blue line. Meanwhile, Motor City in. Seath, wrist shot, fought off. Rebound, deflected in the air to the near corner. Johnson played in just five games in the regular season, barely qualified for the playoffs, but was extremely productive offensively with five points. Johnson was knocked down in the hat-trick zone. Wobbles back to the bench. And the Rockers reset. Turnover. Cunningham backhand effort was thwarted. And Jamison Milam gets the puck up. Knocked down by Spitznov with a high stick. And the whistle getting us to the final media timeout of the first period. But the hat tricks with a 1 0 lead. Thanks to Colby Johnson and his first postseason goal at 14-23. Barry and Dina Cola with the assists. You're watching Danbury Hattricks Hockey on the Hattricks Digital Network.
Diversified Printing Solutions in Danbury is the Hattrick's official printing partner. If you want it printed, call Tina and let them get it inked up for you. They can do it all. Locally owned and printed on paper from Connecticut Trees. Dr. Matt Hartsburg is an official member of the Danbury Hattrick's medical team. Hartsburg Chiropractic is cutting-edge chiropractic care right here in your backyard. Check out Hartsburg Chiropractic and get on the road to a pain-free hockey season. Blue Light Electric is a proud sponsor of the Danbury Hattricks. Blue Light Electric happily provides service to all parts of Connecticut, performing high-quality electrical work for residential and commercial properties. Blue Light Electric is always accepting new customers. Litchfield Distillery, it's the spirit of hard work. The Batchers of Litchfield Distillery, in honor of the early farmers of Northwest Connecticut, present to you the locally made Litchfield Distillery bourbon, vodka, and gin. Grab a beverage at the rabbit hole and hoist the barrel with the hat tricks. Back in Fraser, Michigan, Colby Johnson got the scoring starter for the hat tricks. At 14-23, Billy Berry and Nick DiNicola with the helpers. And the hat tricks with a much needed first goal in a must win game. Dan Berry lost in the overtime in the series opener yesterday. They need a victory to force a game three tomorrow here at Big Boy Arena. Buck in front, swept out to center. Rotundi goes cross ice, receives it back up the left wing. Headman pass, soccer down by Cunningham. But the Rockers work in. Delaney, right wing, chopped one. Past McCullum, the follow-up, blocked by Gonzalez, who tried to lead the rush. Knocked down Rotundi, slap shot, his stick snapped in half. Get some oohs and ahs from the crowd. Point shot trickles on, and McCollum's got it with the mitt. As Delaney was crossing in front, this massive winger, number 67 in black. T.J. Delaney. Patrick's change up the lines. It's Barry Ratcliffe and Woolley. Johnson had gone two straight games without a point. Corrects that with the game's only goal thus far. As for Barry, his excellent start with the Hattricks continues. Now points in 10 of his first 14 games with Danbury. His total on the season now up to 13 if you include regular season, but his first postseason point, same thing for Dina Cola. Rockers in the offensive zone. Barry takes it away, then takes a spill, and nothing called. Ratcliffe unloads one. Babin steers it aside. And now a whistle as Berry was crunched into the boards. Players meet near the blue line. And I believe it's a penalty on the Rockers. Now, Pat, we've seen a couple of trips in the early going, but that seems to be a theme. Let the guys play. It's playoff hockey. It's got to be egregious. That, a hit from behind. But initially I thought, oh, yes, there is a player in the box. It is Scott Koash who is in the penalty box after the hit on Berry. So things that harm a player will result in a penalty. Seems to be the case thus far tonight with three minutes remaining in the first period and the hat tricks of the power play. Ruiz shoots, it's blocked right onto the stick of Sneath and he slingshots it down the ice. Rockers with the number two penalty kill in the FPHL during the regular season. They killed off all six hat tricks opportunities last night. Rockers got one power play yesterday, did not score. Motor City clears. Louise chases after the rolling puck with 40 seconds gone on the Coash penalty. He is in the box for boarding at 16.59. Johnson, Patrick's goal scorer, rims it around the kick plate, and it's lumberjacked out to center. LaBelle settles a wobbling puck, gets at the red line, and flips one in on Babin. 
Lays it off, and a clear from the Rockers. Metrics have had little to nothing on the power play to the first game in almost a period here. But here's Barry, has a lane, his wrist shot off the glove, swing and a miss on the rebound. Patrick's keep it alive in the offensive zone. Gonzalez left point. Drops off for Ratcliffe. Surveys. Straight away Gonzalez. Return Ratcliffe, cross slot. Bunted down by Berry. Up top Gonzalez. Left circle Ratcliffe. Back Gonzalez, wrist shot. Deflected down in front. Brown lost an edge. Patrick's with 10 seconds on the power play. Ratcliffe. Gonzalez, wrist shot. Might have hit off of Bamin. And the Rockers send it down and kill off the Coash boarding penalty. Final minute of the first period. Patrick's holding on to a 1 0 lead. Miscommunication behind the net. Delaney for Svitsnov. Wrist shot blocked by Gonzalez. It plopped down right next to the Hattrick's defenseman. Harwell charges the other way. Up the right wing. Walled off. Free puck in the corner. It's available. Played for Harwell to the back. Bedard, his wrist shot gets through, but snagged by Babin. And an offensive zone faceoff upcoming for the Hattricks, who on that power play in the final 45 seconds or so might have figured something out against that Rockers kill, Pat. Absolutely. And I was actually a little proud of how they handled that whole power play scenario. Granted, they didn't get the result they wanted off of the man advantage, but they definitely showed a little more grit than they did last night, getting a lot more shots on net and you know, almost getting there with that very breakaway. Tie up off the face off. It's free at the right point. Back out to LaBelle and ramped in by Dina Cola. Babin active, touches the puck off. Final 15 seconds of the first period. Stretch pass picked off. Tina Cola at the red line. And that is it for the opening 20 minutes. After one, the Hattricks lead it one to nothing over the Rockers in a win or go home situation. Shots 13-9 Motor City in the first period. And the only goal, Colby Johnson at 14-23 from Billy Berry and Nick DiNicola has the Hattricks in the lead. Rockers took two penalties. Hattricks took one. DiNicola and Gulo were assessed on sportsmanlike conduct penalties. That created some four-on-four -four hockey at 7-10. And then Coash was in the box for boarding at 16.59. Matrix had a couple opportunities on the power play there. Now, Pat, your chin just hit the floor. We saw someone of a celebrity just walk right past us. I, I guess you could say someone of a and celebrity. And maybe enemy number one here at Big Boy Arena. <laughs> Daniel Amesbury just walked right in front of our, of our view. And Pat, you were a bit stunned, as was I. <laughs> now, Little many will remember what happened earlier this season in Danbury. Yes. With Amesbury's hit on Danny Vanderweel. The scary situation that resulted afterwards. Happy to see Vanderweel playing tonight in this playoff series. Captain for the Rockers. But that was unexpected. Very, very unexpected. Um, however, semi-expected? I, I know the Comets season is pretty much done at this point, I believe. I know they, they didn't make playoffs this year, but still very odd out of all places to see, you know, Ames again here in Big Boy Arena, Ranger Michigan. I mean, again, anything can happen in the Federal Prospects Hockey League, Doug. I, there are so many different things that could happen here. I'm, that honestly is probably one of the least surprising things that happen. Obviously surprising to us, but given the, the history of the league, I don't know. That's, uh, 
I'm very speechless after that. I don't know if you can pick that up from here. I just... We will. An indefinite suspension was handed out to Daniel Amesbury. Yes. He then went to the Fort Wayne Comets and played a bottom six role with Fort Wayne. Was a fan favorite, a Correct. community favorite, as yes. he was continuing his efforts in the community, which he has always done. Was a beloved figure in the Danbury community. So happy to see Daniel Amesbury in attendance, rooting on his former teammates in a game that the Hattricks must have as we shift our focus back to the play on the ice Correct. from period number one. A little bit of a feeling out process in the first five to seven minutes for both these teams. Yeah. More of let's not make a mistake and give the other team an early one nothing lead. Exactly what we saw, both goalies not tested, yeah. not nearly as much as last night's opening period. Correct. Defensive structure, definitely a point of emphasis in period one. I definitely feel as though this was kind of a feel out period. I mean, obviously, Johnson got up there, on, got us up on the board, gave us a one nothing lead hanging into this, you know, this first intermission here. But again, it's you're feeling each other out after you've both done almost the same exact bus ride. So again, you're testing out the limits of each person, see if you can catch them, you know, on their offside if they're not really paying attention. And I mean, we're able to get Babbitt on the blocker side. So I mean. Again, testing the waters here for both teams. Perfect shot from Johnson. Tonight's position, now you were in the scorer's box last night right on the glass. I was up top in the rafters in Danbury. Here we are 10, 15 rows off the ice. The play looks a little slower tonight than it did yes, it does. Than it, it did last night. Does. It was a lot of run and gun yesterday. Plenty of offensive opportunities. Scrambles in front, goaltenders diving extending themselves tonight a different story both goalies have made the saves that they've had to but it has not been that type of game a little bit sluggish it seems like both of these teams were just on a bus for 11 plus hours correct very correct i honestly that that adds to the thrill of it you know like we said earlier we're kind of anticipating another overtime game and again i kind of mentioned earlier you have these two teams that are still testing out the waters and again not making these big split saves and all these crazy moves it's they're really stripped down to basics tonight again they'll they'll go to some bounds but i feel it's really just basic hockey at the moment it could ramp up based on the situation but that's what i'm excited to see you'd anticipate both of these spectacular coaches will make some adjustments. Of course, Billy McCreary's resume off the charts, champion last year, among a slew of other accolades throughout his long playing and now coaching career. And on the other side, Gordy Brown, FPHL head coach of the year, has gotten this Motor City team to buy into his philosophy, 97 points on the season. They're in front of the home crowd, here in Michigan, they got the job done in front of the Danbury faithful last night. One of the dominoes will have to fall in the second period. That was a very timid start for a playoff game. Wasn't as ferocious. It just seemed like it was mistake-free hockey at its best, and Johnson had a little bit of room and made the most of it. The perfect shot, bar down, over the shoulder of Babin, and he avoids the glove which seems like the smart thing to do against Babin, who catches with the right. Typically, goaltenders will have their blocker on the right side, so there is an adjustment period, Correct. and Johnson figured it out. Yeah, and that's always a treat to see, especially here in Frazier. It's always a good place to be, and we have some fans getting... Really we mentioned the McCreary's were in. We, we, yes. We, we, yes. We saw all the McCreary's in the house before the puck drop. If that wasn't a sign, then I don't know what is. They I, are I all they... here in full support of the Hattricks and their brother, their son, Billy McCreary, behind the bench for Danbury. And a first period that Danbury will take more times than not. Absolutely, and you know, I've always sensed, you know, being with this organization since 2021, I've seen various years, I've, I've been through the championship year, I've been through our first year of playoffs where 
ultimately we fell to the Columbus River Dragons, who would end up actually losing to the Watertown Wolves that year, won the Commissioner's Cup. And one thing that has always remained certain is Billy coaches best in front of his family. I don't know if it's just a mental game for him or if he always likes to just make sure he impresses his family. But again, he's also in his home state of Michigan. So again, there's, there's that kind of added mental game to him, whether it might not affect overall the players on the ice, but definitely our head coach. It definitely is a place up there. I mean, it's been touched on throughout the season. The history of hockey in Danbury. 14 FPHL seasons. 10 of those seasons have had a Danbury-based franchise. And five times, one of those franchises has made it to the Commissioner's Cup Finals. On the other side, Motor City is just in its second season as a franchise. They made the playoffs last year, got swept by Columbus. This season, they charged ahead. We're one of the top teams in the league, obviously jockeying with the hat tricks for that number two spot. But Motor City, a little bit upset from last year, the result in the playoffs against Columbus. They get a huge win on the road. Might be two different mindsets. The hat tricks might know how to win. They might know what the formula is. But Motor City almost playing with house money like, hey, we've been here all year. We've flown under the radar. These two sides haven't squared off too much. And Motor City used it to their advantage yesterday. Kept the game close, won it in overtime. Tonight, I think the Hattricks solved a little bit of the puzzle. Got back into their game, get the puck out, get it away from McCollum into the offensive zone, start the cycle, get shots towards Babin. Doesn't have to go on goal, just got to cause traffic in front. Dirty goals will beat Babin. I say that when Johnson beat him one-on-one -on -one with a shot right over the shoulder. <laughs> but still, typically a formula against a high-caliber goalie is muck things up in front, whack home a dirty goal. Wonder if we'll see that in period two. I honestly am wondering the same thing. And again, the offense really, they kind of had a, a nice jolt of energy at the end for us. So I imagine in the locker room now, the way they're conversing, they want to ride that momentum here into the second period. And that's one thing I've always said, you know, in the penalty boxes about riding momentum, because that, that's key to any type of success. Again, we're coming off of a overtime loss at the best way you want to come into a, a, a road game of all situations. But again, if you're going to start a period, start a game on the road, one nothing, you want to carry that through and through. 20 minutes in the books here at Big Boy Arena in Fraser, Michigan. Danbury's first trip to Michigan this season. Hattricks played here in November of 2022, so early last season. Rockers came to town in early December of 2023 this year. Team split. Rockers won last night in the opening game of the series. 3-2 in overtime. Sneath with the winner. Tonight... 20 minutes down, and Colby Johnson with the lone goal. Billy Berry and Nick DiNicola with the helpers at 14-23, and the Hattricks carry a 1-0 advantage into the middle period. We're about eight minutes away from puck drop in period two. We will take a break. And when we come back, we'll have puck drop of period two between the Hattricks and the Rockers, you're watching Danbury Hattricks play off hockey on the Hattricks Digital Network.
I gotta catch those. I gotta work on my hands. This guy. Stop by TK's American Cafe on White Street in Danbury and try one of their 76 amazing wing flavors. Visit TK'sAmericanCafe.com for more information. Danbury Parking Authority. Park in the Patriot Garage across the street from the Danbury Ice Arena. It's safe, secure, and legal. Make sure the only ticket you get is to the game. Danbury Chiropractic and Wellness. Dr. Jared DiLorenzo is a proud member of the Danbury Hattricks medical team. Stop by and see them on North Street in downtown Danbury. Feeling good is an option, and they can get you there. Buzz 8 Appliance Scratch and Dent Outlet is the local leader for appliances and household wares. Do you like to eat? They have a refrigerator. Do you want clean clothes? They have a washer. They got it all. It's Buzz Aid Appliance. Coca-Cola is the official beverage of the Danbury Hattricks. Sweet, fizzy goodness. As refreshing as you remember. Coltec, the founder of Plastic Chamber Technology, is headquartered locally in Brookfield. Coltec is family owned and operated with experience in the drainage industry dating back to the 1950s. When you're talking drainage and stormwater, Coltec is the world leader. Contact them today at coltec.com. Fairfield County Bank is the official bank of the Danbury Hattricks. It's where the Hattricks Bank and the Tellers wear the Danbury Hattricks top hat. Fairfield County Bank is your hometown bank and a proud supporter of your hometown team. For a comfortable stay with great amenities, the only choice is the La Quinta by Wyndham and Danbury. Ask for the Hattricks friends and family rate. You can't beat it. La Quinta. Texas Roadhouse, located on Newtown Road in Danbury, opened its doors locally in 2017 and is known for hand-cut steaks, cactus blossom, fall-off-the-bone ribs, made-from-scratch sides, and fresh-baked bread. The restaurant prides itself on its legendary food, legendary service, and legendary fun.
Diversified Printing Solutions in Danbury is the Hattrick's official printing partner. You want it printed? Call Tina and let them get it inked up for you. They can do it all. Locally owned and printed on paper from Connecticut Trees. Dr. Matt Hartsburg is an official member of the Danbury Hattrick's medical team. Hartsburg Chiropractic is cutting-edge chiropractic care right here in your backyard. Check out Hartsburg Chiropractic and get on the road to a pain-free hockey season. Blue Light Electric is a proud sponsor of the Danbury Hattricks. Blue Light Electric happily provides service to all parts of Connecticut, performing high-quality electrical work for residential and commercial properties. Blue Light Electric is always accepting new customers. Litchfield Distillery, it's the spirit of hard work. The Batchers of Litchfield Distillery, in honor of the early farmers of Northwest Connecticut, present to you the locally made Litchfield Distillery bourbon, vodka, and gin. Grab a beverage at the rabbit hole and hoist the barrel with the hat tricks. We welcome you back inside Big Boy Arena in Fraser, Michigan. Game two of the first round, best of three series, hat tricks and Rockers, Danbury in a do or die situation, must win tonight to force a game three tomorrow. Welcome back, Hattricks fans. Doug Latuka alongside Patrick Frenette in the broadcast booth here at Big Boy Arena. Hattricks with a 1 0 lead thanks to Colby Johnson's first postseason professional point. Barry and Dina Cola with the assists at 14 23. Now, if we remember back to last night, it is Coash and Harwell on the faceoff, and we are off and running in period number two. We remember last night, Patrick had a 1 0 lead after one, ballooned that advantage to two thanks to Ruiz about midway through the second, and the Rockers with three straight goals. One in the second, one in the third, and the overtime winner at 16-24 of the first OT. Svitsnov turning in the corner, throws it off McCollum Delaney. Back inside for Svitsnov, lifts the stick. He was halted by Abdella. Hattricks lead the rush. Johnson charges up the left wing, cuts inside his backhander, slid off of his blade. Touched for Dina Cola. Curls back in the corner, dangling out of trouble, double teamed, and his pass to the back hops out to center where LaBelle flings it back in. Less of a run and gun first period between these teams than what we saw last night as Vanderweel's centering pass was tapped aside by LaBelle. Defending in front. Ruiz picks it off. Hands off from McKittrick. Up the right wing. Dangling inside. Ruiz with a wrister. Stop. Rebound wide. Two chances for the Hattricks captain. Babin stopped the first one and the second one. Was swept wide. We played a minute and 20 seconds in the second period. And already more of an offensive mindset in this period than what we saw in the opening frame. Johnson beat Babin over the left shoulder, blocker side, for the 1 0 lead. Turnover at center, but the Rockers get possession right back. Brown shoved down King, outlet Coash. Juggling puck on the blue line. Batted ahead by Woolley. Motor City charged ahead. Smith, right side. Brown gets back on him, lifts the stick. Barry, who assisted on the Johnson goal in the first. Tape to tape with Woolley up the left wing. Was denied. And it's turned back for the Rockers. Abdella swats it down, Gonzalez. Up for Ratcliffe, looking for reinforcements. Rotundi got back. And Ratcliffe dishes it in deep. A battle for it. And Coash comes away. Abdella took a spill. Coash wrist shot, waffled aside. Colton gets there first. Rims it around. They wrestle for it in the near corner. Spits out for Harwell. Goes back to Abdella. 
Now three minutes are raced in the second period. one nothing Hattrick's advantage. They trail the Rockers 1-0 in the series following an overtime loss last night. Rotundi overstated. Johnson applies the pressure. Harwell slaps one. Deflected to the near corner. Nicola puts it in front. Knocked down Harwell. Is shot glove saved by Babin as Harwell tried to roof it. And Babin got the glove on it. We've seen Harwell do that a couple of times this season. But on goalies that catch with the left. So that would have been blocker's side top shelf. But Babin covering up top left corner. And keeps it a 1-0 Hattrick's lead. McKittrick got a grab of Giuliano. Another log jam along the far boards. Three puck. Three black jerseys, two orange. And it squirts out to Sneath. Leading Conway up the right wing. His wrister fought off by McCullum. Kicks off the end boards. And McKittrick for Ruiz too far in front of him. And Vanderweel motors up the right side. Around Bedard. Vanderweel shot stopped by McCullum. He was glued to that near post and cut off the angle. Here's Sneath. Wrist shot save. Rebound kicked out. A third chance. Pops in the air. Rockers still have it. Sneath's wrister blocked by Cunningham. The puck's still in the zone. And Koash angles it for Gulo below the goal line. Throws it to the middle and Ratcliffe reads it and rainbows it down the ice. Three A-plus chances for the Rockers. McCollum stopped them all. Gil Diaz sends it as far as the Hattrick's blue line. LaBelle out to center ice. Barry up the gut for Woolley. Goes on goal and Babin opts for the whistle. Again, that was to be expected from McCollum. White, the bashing in front just Rebound after rebound after rebound, and he was there for all three. It will keep us up one nothing. And you know, Doug, you mentioned earlier that a shot waffled by him, on top of the waffles. I'm smelling biscuits here at the Big Boy Arena. <laughs> I don't. I, I've been meaning to get that off my chest. Just the biscuit smell. I don't know if you smell that too, but mentioning waffles got me in the mindscape. Well, have you ever been to the Big Boy? I think it's a fast food chain. I, I'm not 100% sure, but they have one right in front of the arena here in Fraser, Michigan. I'll have to try it out at some point. Miguel Diaz at the left point. Flutters one to the circle. It was mishandled and the Hattricks charge the other way. Wobbling puck, Barry chases. Babin steers far corner. Delaney in stride, inside move. Giuliano for Delaney. His shot, glove save. No, it hit off, yeah, it hit off of his glove. And all the way out to center. McCullum did get a piece. Almost went with the windmill, but he made the stop. There's a sharp angle, shot stopped, and Woolley goes crashing into Babin. The net comes off the moorings. And we'll see if any penalties result. Now we were chatting in the pregame about if both of these goalies could replicate what they did last night. So far, They've been as good as advertised. As we're at the first media timeout, Hattricks with a 1-0 lead. About six minutes gone in the second period. You're watching playoff hockey on the Danbury Hattricks Digital Network. Stony Hill Dental Care has served as the leader and preferred provider of dental care in Bethel, Connecticut. Go see Dr. K. He'll make you look like a million bucks and feel like it too. The official team dentist of the Danbury Hattricks.
Vision Designs is the official merchandiser of the Danbury Hat Tricks. Vision Designs is a full-service screen printing, embroidery, signage, and promotional company locally owned and operated in Brookfield. Vision Designs is the hometown company with the national power. Check them out at visiondesignct.com. Decker Tool Rental is the official full-service equipment rental shop of the Danbury Hat Tricks providing a complete line of quality equipment to all types of contractors, tradesmen, and do-it-yourselfers. Visit them today at 84 Federal Road in Danbury or on the web at DeckerToolRental.com. Kafala Coffee. Real coffee, good coffee, no great coffee. Plus hot chocolate right on the concourse level at the Danbury Ice Arena. Kafala Coffee. Stay warm this winter. Doug Latuka with Patrick Furnett inside Big Boy Arena. Empire Division semifinal. Hattricks trailing the Rockers 1-0 in the opening series of the 2024 Commissioner's Cup playoffs. Danbury going for back-to-back -back championships for the first time in league history. Johnson exchanging words with King. Tie up off the face off. And Bedard sauces it below the goal line. McGill Diaz, pestered by Chase Harwell, escapes and darts right up the middle. LaBelle knocks him off the puck. McGill Diaz slaps it behind the Hattricks net. 14 minutes remaining, second period, 1 0 Hattricks. The goal from Johnson in the first period. Dina Cola fumbled the puck near the blue line. McGill Diaz throws it towards the middle. Harwell chips for Dina Cola. Return Harwell's wrist shot block rebound. Sticked aside by Babin. Declan Conway weaving into the zone around Brown. Shot. Oh, off the shoulder and wide. King in front pad saved by McCollum. Two good opportunities for the Rockers in tight. And once again, McCollum on top of his game. Here's Yao in deep, his snapper. Over, rims around the dasher. McGill Diaz. Plays it up, out of the zone. Smith inside for Koash on goal. McCollum fumbled, and then Koash whacked him in the head after the whistle. Both goalies being bothered. You saw Babin get knocked off of his feet. Net came flying off. And there, McCollum took a little love tap from Koash. Just trying to play mind games. Playoff series, it's all about who has the slight edge. Both of these teams extremely even in the regular campaign. Whistle. And I believe a high stick. I believe so, Doug. So the faceoff just outside the hat trick zone. But both of these teams evenly matched. And that explains why. As the hat tricks ice the puck. Explains why two of the first three meetings have gone past regulation. And in both of those games, the Rockers have come away with wins. The other game between the two teams was practically a one goal game. The empty netter from Ratcliffe went in at 20. 1959, whatever you want to call it. So it was a really a 4 3 final. That shot from the point, they score! Another point shot finds its way through the third time in this series, and the Rockers tie it up. Might have been another deflection, and it was the hero last night, TJ Smith, got his stick on it and tipped it over the shoulder of McCollum. Once again, bodies in front and no chance for McCollum. Tie game. Again. Very similar situation to last night, and 
again, the, the antics have just gotten higher again with it being now a tied game here with 12.37 left to play in the second period. That's been the one way to beat McCullum when his eyes are being blocked by mounds of bodies in front and deflections on point shots. So the Rockers have tied the game. Now 12 minutes remaining in the second period. And the hat tricks answer. Now Danbury last night had a 2-0 lead but didn't score after the midway point in the second. Danbury in the offensive zone, pass in front behind Woolley. And back out to center ice. It's Berry backtracking in his own territory. Across the ice, Brown chipped it into Vanderweel, who lost an edge. Shot from a sharp angle, gloved by McCollum, and he gets the whistle. So the goal officially, TJ Sneath, his second of the series from Lane King and Josh Colton. So, King and Colton goal scorers last night, and the trio connect tonight. All three goal scorers yesterday, Pat, combining for Motor City's first score to level things off. There's Milam's wrister, springs off the back glass. Centering try, never got to Delaney. It was parked in front. Harwell shoulders Delaney to the ice. Bodies go tumbling. Johnson could not clear, but on the ricochet, it spits out to center. Johnson charging ahead. Milam possesses near the red line. Giuliano brought it in offsides. And the whistle. Kind of weird how things work out like that when you have that second goal, or at least not the second goal, but the first Rockers goal scored by all three goal scorers within the period as obviously goals and assist wise, but. Now it's credit to the Hattricks who have really clamped down defensively in terms of odd man rushes, one time opportunities, getting to the middle of the ice. But those point shots, it's been part of Motor City's game plan all series. They've capitalized three times on it now. And it's a 1-1 game approaching the midway point of regulation. Ruiz tossing his weight around. Sneath stops and starts. Gets crunched by Abdella. Thrown towards the goal. Knocked down by McCullum. And McKittrick crisscrosses with Cunningham into the offensive zone. Return for McKittrick over his stick. McGill Diaz goes cross ice, gets a return. McGill Diaz shoots, blocked. LaBelle swipes it out of the zone. Johnson chugging the legs. Babin is out of the goal. Lost the handle. He's out of the net. Di Nicola gets to the puck. Couldn't get the shot off as Gulo was in his way. Tundi sidesteps the check from Johnson. That was Harwell, rather, who follows it up, shoots, kicks it. Rebound, Dina Cola whips it wide. Bedard. His opportunity blocked. All the way around, Dina Cola didn't see the puck till late. Couldn't jump into the play. Coash one on two on LaBelle. Coash floats one on. Easy stop for McCullum. The outlet given away to Harwell. Who hit Rotundi, who had his head down trying to play the puck. Rotundi at his own blue line. Nine minutes left, second period, 1-1 game. Bouncing puck behind the net. Centered, blocked by Brown, given away Giuliano. Brown recovered and lifted the stick. 
Ratcliffe, far side, Berry. Back for Ratcliffe, one-timer save. Rebound, Woolley taps on goal. Turnaround shot, Berry off the mask of Babin. Berry dangling below the goal line, around the net. Stapled by Vanderweel. They wrestle for it in the corner. Vanderweel and Berry. Svitsnov angles off the boards and out to center. Now it's Babin's turn to put on a show. After McCullum took over earlier in this period. Stretch pass through Svitsnov all the way down and an icing on Motor City. But we are at the mid-period media timeout, so the Rockers can't change, but they can get a rest following the icing. Rockers tie the game on Sneath's second goal of the series at 7.23. Stay with us. You're watching Playoff Hockey on the Hattricks Digital Network. Clancy moving and relocation. Moving is stressful, but it doesn't have to be. Call Clancy and let them do the heavy lifting for you. Resident and commercial services plus other services such as storage. Remember, Clancy is fancy. Todd Maserati Alfa Romeo of Danbury is the premier automobile partner in the Danbury area. Located on Newtown Road, the Bennett family has been putting the community behind the wheel for over 35 years. Dream big, drive a Maserati or Alfa Romeo. New and pre-owned vehicles available. Let Todd Maserati Alfa Romeo of Danbury be your choice. Dowler Garage in New Preston specializes in batteries, brakes, and general service. When you're stuck, you're in luck. Call Mike so you don't need a bike. Dowler Garage. Peach Wave of Bethel. Located on Greenwood Avenue in Bethel, Peach Wave is your place to go for a quality treat. Frozen yogurt and toppings, it doesn't get much better. Catch a wave, a peach one. We welcome you back inside Big Boy Arena, Frazier, Michigan. Second game of a best of three, Hattricks and Rockers. Motor City with a 1-0 series lead, and the Rockers with the lone goal in the period. Sneath from King and Colton at 7:23 have tied the game on a point shot. Shots are 24-13 in favor of the home team. Offensive zone draw. Abdella's shot blocked by Giuliano, who is out near the blue line. Hattricks keep at the left point. Cunningham tossed to the ice, and it's fluttered back into the Hattrick zone where Abdella retrieves. Hattricks with McKittrick, Ruiz, Cunningham, Abdella, and Gonzalez on the ice. It's Abdella wandering through center, connects with Cunningham. Inside McKittrick, shoots, scores! A bar down beauty from McKittrick! His second of the series, and the hat trick step back in front. Daniel McKittrick with a snipe. Second bar down goal of the contest for the hat trick. Johnson in the first. McKittrick gives Danbury a two to one lead. That might just be the way to beat Babin, Pat. It's got to be. I mean, going over I that I think it's blocker, the way to beat everyone, really. Honestly, honestly, again, you have a goaltender who's at ECHL caliber. There's always got to be that one weak spot. And the Hattrick scored both of their goals glove side last night. And tonight, as we've said, blocker and perfectly placed. McKittrick second of the playoffs. Rockers trying to answer. Milam activates at the right point. Slaps it below the goal line. Coach touches on for Smith. LaBelle intercepts. Leads the rush. Johnson right wing. Sauces it off the boards. McGill Diaz throws it towards the middle. Bouncing puck out to center. Bedard had trouble with it. And Smith whacks it onto the stick of Dina Cola. Stretch for Johnson through his legs. Milam pestered by Harwell. Kisses it off the glass out to center. The dart for Johnson, swats it in, bunted down by Milam, gets the red, and Coash floats it in. It trickles in on McCullum. He gets the whistle and forces the defensive zone face off. Honestly, a beautiful way to answer on that unfortunate Rockers goal. 
and again, going bar down, definitely one of my favorite styles of a goal, and especially from someone as Daniel McKittrick, it's electric to be up 2-1 with 631 left to play in the second period. But Lots of room for error and inaccuracy when you aim for the top shelf or to get it underneath the bar. Hattricks have succeeded twice thus far tonight. McKittrick now with nine points in his last seven games. Four goals during that span, his second goal of the playoffs. The assists to Cunningham and Abdella at 12.25. Rockers in the O-zone. Slung cross slot. Colton throws it in front, bouncing puck. Barry knocks it to the right point. It's kept in by Rotundi. All the way around, in front, through the crease. And Ratcliffe off the glass, two on one. Woolley with Barry. Woolley left side on the backhand for Woolley in front. And it's knocked away by Svitsnov. It was Barry and Woolley on the rush. And the Hattricks do not get a shot off. Della pressured by Conway, locates Gonzalez, touched for Cunningham. Hattricks have numbers, Cunningham shoots, blocker save. Cunningham has it back, double teamed. And the Rockers get it out to center. Things starting to open up here in the later stages of the second period. Hattricks with a couple odd man opportunities, good shot there from Cunningham after Woolley and Berry Failed to put one on Babin. King around the net. Didn't have much help. And Gonzalez at the end of his shift steps inside the line. Crisscrossing with Cunningham into his skates. Turns back and wheels it down low. Vander Weel stole it away. And Coas chips it up the boards. LaBelle loves it down with the left mitt. Gulo to Coash. Shoots over the crossbar, all the way out to center. Two on two, Johnson, right wing, pass into the skates of Harwell. And the Rockers break out the other way. Fields was a step ahead, Gulo could not corral. Johnson and Fields exchanging words. Dina Cola inside Ruiz, it's Harwell off the side of the net. And it went wide. So Dina Cole and Harwell right back together. And a couple good opportunities for that line, all stemming from the physicality and energy that Johnson has brought on the wing. Three and a half left in the second period. Hattricks with a two to one lead. Svitsnov turning. Giuliano off the bench in the near corner. Throws it towards the goal. They, they say no goal. McCullum gets back to his skates. Point shot deflected wide. Svitsnov. In the area of Giuliano, he was tied up. But Delaney sent it down low. The outlet pass for Ratcliffe. Turns into an icing on the hat tricks. But the final media timeout of the second period. Hattricks two, Rockers one. You're watching Danbury Hattricks playoff hockey on the Hattricks digital network. Reverie Brewing Company is a featured beverage in the Danbury Ice Arena. Grab a Reverie and don't quit your daydream. When you drink Reverie, anything is possible. Set Fitness is the official gym and training center of the Danbury Hattricks. Pump iron or tone up. Join Set Fitness and be the best you. Mitchell, experience the difference. Mitchell has served the community since 1945. Heating oil, propane, and service for your home or business. Mitchell is ready to serve. Oak Ridge Waste and Recycling has the roots in the community for all of your needs. Residential and commercial, Oak Ridge is the official sanitation partner of the Danbury Hattricks. Hat City Physical Therapy is Danbury, Connecticut's leading provider of physical therapy and orthopedic specialists. Their highly skilled and caring team of licensed therapy providers are focused and committed to restoring your health and well-being so that you can return to the life you enjoy. 
We were just treated to a media timeout concert. Inflated guitars, a couple of windmill strings. Fun is, stuff. Yeah. Here inside Big Boy Arena in Fraser, Michigan. Game two. Hat tricks must have it, and they lead two to one, Pat. And also to add to that media timeout, their their host was in this you know luscious purple robe. I mean, couldn't get any more rock than that. You're the song guy, Pat. <laughs> Sounded good to me. Barry. Can't clear. Good keep by McGill Diaz. Point shot. Flutters on. Swung towards the goal. Woolley reverses course. Yao tries the other side. And Woolley settles a bouncing puck. Throws it towards goal. And Babin steers it for Milam with two and a half left in the second period. Hattricks with a one goal lead. McKittrick at 12-25 as the Hattricks back in front for the second time in this game. Ruiz got a piece at the red line, so no icing. McGill Diaz slacks a days ago behind the goal. Stretch pass for Delaney was partially behind him. Got a piece to negate the icing. Abdella harassed by Delaney from behind. A battle for it. Abdella closed along the wall. Feathered down low. Pass to the right point. To the left side, Colton shot stopped. Rebound pops in the air. Koash swatted it over the crossbar. And a three on two if the hat tricks hurry. End of the shift. Ruiz pressured by Koash. Turned by Giuliano. Has Gulo to his right. Giuliano drops Koash. Looking. Pass down low. Giuliano couldn't control and escapes. Hat tricks the other way. Cunningham left wing. Cuts inside. Cunningham crashing. Shot stopped. Rebound available in front. They blow it dead. And a penalty, I believe. Cunningham is on his back. Just off to the right of the goal. That's McKittrick. Gets back to his skates. They blew the plate dead, and the puck was free in front. And it is a penalty. Josh Colton to the box, hooking the call. So with a minute and 17 remaining in the second period, the Hattricks can jump out to their largest lead of the night. Hattricks on the power play, finished off the regular season seventh in the league. They were 0 for 1 or rather 0 for 6 last night on the man advantage. They had 31 power, 33 power play goals in their last 21 games for the Hattricks. Second unit starts things off. Berry straddling the blue line. Righty on his backhand. Throws in front, knocked down, bouncing puck. Steered all the way down. Under a minute to play, second period. 2-1 Hattrick's lead. 25 ticks gone on the Colton hook. Berry darts up the left side, curls back, rims it around the kick plate. Brown tying up Vanderweel. Available in the corner. And then clear. Under 30 seconds to go. The end of Dan Berry's last power play. They got a couple things working. Thus far, not much. Now a turnover and a shorthanded opportunity. Giuliano one-on-one. -on -one, cuts inside. Shoots! You went just wide. McCullum might have got a piece with the glove. Final five seconds of the period. Harwell drops Ruiz. Slap shot. Gloved by Babin. A whistle went off. I wonder if they'll put time back on the clock for offsides or if the officials were signifying the end of the period. But it appears that we have hit triple zeros. Now the Hattricks leading two to one. Now it's ironic, Giuliano had a breakaway at the end of 
I believe the second period last night shorthanded did not score. McCullum stopped him. Might have hit the post on that one. And tonight, McCollum might have grazed it with the mitt or Giuliano shot it wide either way. It keeps a hat tricks two to one lead. So, Danbury in the same position they were in last night. 2-1 lead, heading to the final 20 minutes of regulation. They've done a terrific job defensively, holding Motor City to only outside chances. Their one goal, a point shot, deflected. What do the hat tricks have to do to come away with the victory, force a game three tomorrow? I mean, again, I think we need to just play a simple game. I don't think we, we need to, like, kind of get out the, the narrative a little bit and just focus like this is a regular game. We're going to win this game as a regular one. McCullough has to keep doing what he's doing. Again, stay a little more focused on certain shots. I know there will be times where he kind of gets lost on just, you know, uh, the man just going around him and then covering up his kind of field of view. And again, the defense has been doing a terrific job. So I think if the defense really just keeps doing their job, I think this is a done deal for us. So the hat tricks with the lone goal in the period. I apologize. They had the most recent goal in the period. Two goals in the frame. Sneath tied it up on a point shot deflection at 723. Colton and Rotundi with the helpers. They just added Rotundi there and took off. They took off King, who had points yesterday. So Rotundi is on the board in the playoffs. McKittrick from Cunningham and Abdella at 12:25. The go-ahead goal right now. In a game the Hattricks must have to keep the season alive. It's Chuck a Puck time here at Big Boy Arena. Now, we played this at the intermission last night, but Definitely worth taking another listen back to what Hattrick's head coach Billy McCreary had to say earlier in the week about the matchup, what to expect with Motor City, and what he felt his team needed to do to get the job done heading into the postseason. So let's take a listen to what the head man had to say. Hello, Hattricks fans, and welcome to a playoff edition of Catching Up with McQuarrie. I'm Hattricks broadcaster Doug Latuka, alongside Hattricks head coach and general manager Billy McQuarrie. Coach, the time is now. We are finally at the playoffs, 56 regular season games in the rearview mirror. You've got a three-game series with Motor City coming up. Could be shorter than that, could go all three. How was practice this week ahead of playoffs? Uh, it's been great. The energy's uh, fantastic, probably the best we've seen all year. Guys are really focused in and excited for the opportunity. Right now, where do you believe your team is mentally, physically, going into round one of the playoffs? I think we're in a really good spot. I mean, um, we're we're still recovering from a little bit of injury, but you know that's why we've worked on our depth throughout the course of the season, and really believe in the guys that have um, have the opportunity here this weekend. And I think mentally, we're probably in the best spot we've been in all year. Guys understand the task at hand. Uh, you know, we've been put through kind of the ringer here this year, and you know, playoff hockey game one is going to be no different than, you know, last game here last weekend. So, you know, we're certainly ready for the opportunity. Just excited to get started. Seems like we've spoken about the mindset of flipping the page on last year and moving forward to this year. But now that you're back in the playoffs, does the mindset and the thoughts from last year about the process and how you can get through the grind of the playoffs come back is it very similar process or does it change team by team uh, I mean it's always a different year but but what you can do as an individual is just ch take the opportunity that that you've had in the past and and apply that mm -hmm. you know in the current situation so uh, you know I, I know for me when I was a player it was it was an honor to just be in the playoffs and you try to take bits of information from those situations throughout the course of your career and apply them to where you are in that moment and you know, I think certainly for the guys that, that had that experience last year, they can, they can take away uh, you know, some positives uh, from that experience mm -hmm. and they can learn from some of the things that they need to learn from. And, um, you know, but it's going to be a different year. It's going to be a different grind. It's going to be a different challenge. 
You've had some pretty stellar rookies this year. Rookie of the year for the Hattricks, Corey Cunningham, second on the team in goals. Connor McCollum was among the league leaders in wins in the net for you guys. But in the playoffs, it tends to be the veterans that you lean on. You've got champions in that locker room from last year and from around the league. How heavily do you rely on those guys, the vets, to carry the load, especially early on in the playoffs, until the rookies get acclimated to the situation? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't think we're really going to change much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've relied on our young players all year, and, and that's something that we're going to continue to do. Obviously, we rely on our veterans and the guys that have been in those situations before. Um, you know, but but not to not to try to replicate last year. But you know, if you look at the team we had in the playoffs, uh, you know, we had a lot of young guys stepping up mm -hmm. in some big in some big areas. So. You know, we foresee the same kind of um, March here, you know, this year where we're going to rely on, on everybody for sure. Do you feel like you have an advantage going into this playoffs? Considering you won last year, you brought back a nice number of guys. Some who were in the bottom six last year have actually stepped up into the top six. Do you feel like you, your team is in a better spot than some others in the league just based on experience and what you guys did last year? I don't know if we're in a in a better spot. I think we're in a really good spot, mm -hmm. and I, I like where we are. Um, but you know, the, the all the teams that are in the playoffs now have, have earned the right to be here. And you know, if, if there's anything to learn throughout the course of the regular season, it's anybody can beat anybody. So you know, we have to show up and and play our game. And you know, the guys that are playing, the guys that are mentally strong, those are the guys that are going to help us get through the times that that we need to get through here in the next three weeks. Had a bit of a lull at the end of the year, three losses in the final four when you guys were going for that number two seed, trying to hop Motor City and take that two seed. Did you see any changes of feelings after a couple of losses when you didn't get that two seed or was it, all right, let's flip the page. We knew we were playing the Rockers for about a month at this point. Let's just go after it. Yeah, I mean, there's really no, like, obviously we'd love to be at home and, you know, we, we enjoy putting on a show in front of our fans, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, we also have a job to do and, and our job is to win one game at home and one game on the road. And, uh, you know, I think if you look at uh, where we are, you know, I'd, I'd rather be in our situation here. Yeah. Uh, you know, Motor City has to drive 12 hours out here, uh, you know, today, play yeah. a game tomorrow, then they have to drive 12 hours home and, and play game two. You know, we just have that 12 hour drive for game two. And, you know, if we take care of our home ice, we give ourselves a mm -hmm. you know tremendous opportunity to uh, you know put ourselves in a situation that we want to be in. Well, Columbus just did it last night. Not quite a 12 hour ride for them, but they took care of business against Mississippi in their game one as the better seed traveling to the lower seed for that game one, how things work in the FPHL. Moving forward for you guys in net. Brought in Taylor Joseph at the trade deadline. Connor McCollum, we've spoken about his numbers all year. He's been the starting goaltender for the majority. Joseph has come in and played a decent amount of games and was outstanding last year in the playoffs against you guys. Do you have a plan for the playoff goaltending, or is it still up in the air? Uh, well, our plan when Tijo came into the fold was kind of just uh, get into a little bit of a rotation mm -hmm. and you know really trust in our two goaltenders and and help in their development and their process and you know MC played a lot of hockey for us throughout the course of the year so we wanted to you know give him a little bit of rest heading into the postseason and you know I think the way the the rotation is working out you know MC will get game one and uh, you know he's he's been phenomenal all year um, you know he's been the backbone for us defensively all season long and he's certainly earned that opportunity so we're very confident in what he's going to do and then we'll have to make some decisions from there. Connor McCollum, one of the rookie all-stars in the FPHL for the Empire Division. So he will get game one, and we'll see what happens moving forward with Joseph in game two and potentially game three. Games two and game three will be in uh, Michigan, and then game one here in Danbury. We shift to the Motor City squad. You've only seen them twice, and that was early in December. We've touched on 2023 compared to 2024 in terms of the roster, how you guys played once the calendar flipped and you really turned it on. What are some of the advantages of playing a team in round one of the playoffs that you didn't really see too much in the regular campaign? Well, I think you just have to focus on 
you know your game right like you don't have to it's it's not like we're playing a game uh, a team that we've seen 19 times mm -hmm. and you just know exactly what they're doing so you know you need to focus on your game and you want to execute your game plan uh, better than they want to execute their game mm -hmm. plan and you know for game one being in our house i think you know we should be able to provide more energy more physicality uh, and if we can execute our game plan a little bit better than theirs, you know, we're giving ourselves a good ch good chance to win game one, you know, and, and go into game two in a really good spot. What does the preparation look like against a team that you haven't played much compared to maybe a Binghamton squad that you saw 18 times? Yeah, well, we've done more video this week than we have in the past. Usually, you know, I would say it's in the regular season, you're doing video one or two times throughout the course of the week. Uh, you know, this this week we've done it probably three times, mm -hmm. um, you know, just trying to touch on, you know, different aspects of the game and getting our guys familiar with, you know, their team, the way they want to play, the structure that they're looking to play within, uh, you know, also getting a look at the rink and their facility. You know, mm -hmm. we haven't we haven't had that opportunity to, um, you know, go there and, and feel what it's like to, to play on their ice. And they've had that opportunity here in Danbury. So mm -hmm. trying to find any edge that we can. Um, you know, to, to replicate what we're going to see, uh, you know, when we get to Motor City. And, you know, we've even gone so far as to kind of, um, you know, we went out and got a set of different gloves. So, you know, our, one of our goalies is catching righty and he's got a lefty in his blocker <laughs> hand. And, you know, we envision Babin's going to be starting for them game one. And we want to be familiar with what we're seeing. So it's just all little tweaks that uh, we get to have some fun with throughout the course of the week. And I think we're ready to go. Yeah, Motor City just in the second year of operation with their franchise. You guys played them four times last year. You won all four games, including two at Big Boy Arena. In terms of Danbury's hockey history in the FPHL, FHL, 14 seasons of the FPHL, 10 years there's been a Danbury-based franchise, and in five of those seasons, a Danbury-based franchise has made it to the finals. What does that say about hockey in Danbury and how relevant Danbury franchises are when it comes to the postseason? Well, I mean, if you look at the, if you look at the game of hockey, I mean, it's, it's played off of passion. It's mm -hmm. played, played off of physicality and, and skill and, and will and all those things. And I, I think to play in Danbury, you just have to embody you yeah. know, what it, what it takes to play playoff hockey and what I'm so proud of this group is you know these guys commit to playing playoff hockey for 56 games and you look at other teams around the league and yeah maybe they'll play for 12 15 20 25 games but you know our guys really put it on the line you know absolutely every day and it's uh it's an honor you know to do that with them and just really excited to see what they're going to do here in the real season Team awards were announced last Friday during the regular season finale. Johnny Ruiz, a three-time winner now for the MVP, Offensive Player of the Year. You had Corey Cunningham, Rookie of the Year. Out of the names that won the awards, who were some of those players that you saw grow the most throughout the year or you saw had the most impact on the team throughout the year, whether it was the locker room, on the ice, off the ice, whatever it may be? I mean, you can really touch on all of them mm -hmm. in, in some way, shape, or form. And, you know, I, I really look at, like, the younger guys, uh, like Cunning, he's come a long way since he's gotten here, and he's really worked on his craft and, you know, working on different elements of his game. And, you know, it's, it's tremendous to see him, you know, coming out of the shell on and off the ice. And for a young kid, that's not easy to do, but he's, you know, acclimated himself uh, very quickly mm -hmm. into, you know, what we're doing here. And... You know, Connor McCollum, same thing, you know, young guy that we've really relied upon heavily and, mm -hmm. um, you know, he was hot out of the gate and, you know, we really kind of relied on him from there and, and that's a lot of weight as a, as a young player. So, you know, those are two guys that stick out in my mind, but you can certainly talk about the, you know, like Xavier Abdella and, and ZP and, and Yowser and like what those guys do in the community and, mm -hmm. and for our youth programs and just for our family in general. Um, you know, it just makes me tremendously proud of them and proud to be a part of it. And you know, obviously the, the work that Johnny does yeah. is, is the work that Johnny does. Mm -hmm. It speaks for itself. Um, but you know, it's a, it's a locker room full of 23, 24 leaders in there. And you know, those are, 
five or six that we were able to honor last week. I mean, can the hat tricks hold on and force a game three? Well, you're in the perfect spot to find that out. Final 20 minutes of regulation, hat tricks and rockers in the second game of the best of three. Motor City with a 1-0 series lead over the hat tricks. Goals from Johnson and McKittrick for Danbury Sneath, who scored the overtime winner in game one last night, the lone goal scorer from Motor City. We welcome you back upstairs. Doug Latuka with Patrick Furnett as we get you set for the third period from Big Boy Arena in Fraser, Michigan. Patrick's with a 2-1 lead over the Rockers. Elsewhere in the league, the specific matchup we're keened in on is in the Empire Division. Binghamton, Watertown, Black Bears took a 1-0 series lead last night. What's cooking tonight? So as of right now, Doug, the Black Bears oh currently lead the Watertown Wolves 7-2. to two, Well, with about under six and a half left to play in the third. And in the Continental, currently the Thunderbirds lead the Prowlers 3-2 to two after two full periods of play. So it appears that the winner of this series between Motor City and Danbury will play the number two team overall in the league, the Empire Division winning Binghamton Black Bears in the Empire Division finals. Yes. That will happen next weekend. So it will be Binghamton Rockers or Binghamton Hattricks. These 20 minutes can decide that, Pat. Correct. Last night, we went into the third. Hattricks holding on to a two to one lead. The Rockers with the next two goals, including the winner in overtime. How do the hat tricks avoid a, avoid a repeat tonight? Like I said before we went to the break, Doug, it's all about defense right now. Defense just needs to hold it down. Can't get too flashy on offense. Don't want to go for these backhanders. Obviously, you know, you want to get Babin on his bad side. But again, right now, as long as we hold this score right here, we're set to win this game and force a game three. Atrix with a focus on defense in period three in front by one. Got a minute until we drop the puck on the third. First time these teams have squared off here at Big Boy Arena this season. First time Danbury has made a trip to Michigan all year, even though the Rockers are in. The Empire Division, teams played just twice in the regular campaign. Standings wise, they were neck and neck all the way through until the final day of the regular season. Motor City seven points better than Danbury in the regular campaign. And now 20 minutes to decide if a game three will be played tomorrow afternoon. Puck is dropped and the Hattricks holding on to a two to one lead. Trying to force a game three. Go ahead, Pat. And the Hattricks, you know, have 30 seconds now of power play time, and if they can capitalize on that, that would be huge. Right after the stop and a hit there. And Colton still in the box. Took a penalty late in the period for hooking. So still 26 seconds remaining on the Hattricks power play. Danbury can push the lead to two in the early stages of the frame. A whistle immediately. They jumped on the faceoff. Off the draw, it's swatted to the near corner. Ruiz, sharp angle, pops in the air. Gloved down by Harwell. Milam gave it away, Harwell. Right point, McKittrick. Rister blocked. Motor City out the other way. Here's King. Up the left wing, around the bell. Setters deflected off of McCullum and over the crossbar. Nearly another deflection goal. Both goals tonight. Uh, the first goal for Motor City. Tonight was a deflection. They had two similar instances yesterday. One of the only ways to beat Connor McCullum so far this weekend, as for Babin, 
Pinpoint accuracy from the hat tricks on their two goals. McKittrick and Johnson, long range wrister, gloved by McCullum. And no rebound with a couple black jerseys swarming the blue paint. Salad crowd on hand here at Big Boy Arena. Saw plenty of black and orange circulating the arena during the intermission. Some of the Danbury faithful making the 10 and a half, 11 hour trip to watch the Hattricks try to stay alive in the 2024 playoffs. Free puck near corner. Abdella gave it away to Delaney. Thrown to the middle. Gonzalez chips it on the backhand. And it escapes at the right point through Devin Fields. Delaney swiping it into the zone. Rockers offsides. They must touch up. Berry zigzagging through center. Gets through a couple stick checks. And now the hat tricks must get back. Would have been an offsides if Berry touched the puck. Vanderweel chips and chases. Collides with Bedard below the goal line. Squirts free for Harwell. Reversed LaBelle. LaBelle with his head up, chugging the legs. Cross corner dump. Harwell gets there first. Slaps it around Di Nicola. Bouncing puck. LaBelle left point, return Di Nicola. Has some room, wrist shot, fought off. In the slot, Gulo swiped at the safety. Outlet. Out of the stick of Smith. His wrister snagged by McCollum. Little to no trouble there. And after the whistle, Johnson rides Smith into the end boards. Rockers going back to the regular season have won five games in a row. And they ended Danbury's six-game home winning streak in the playoffs yesterday. The face-off, Conway snaps it. Deflected wide of McCollum. Rockers start the charge again. Sneath got twisted up with Yao. McKittrick has a goal tonight. Dangled and lost the puck. Then picked the pocket of Conway. Rotundi tossed by Ruiz, but does the job. Gets the puck out of the zone. Yao, cross ice, Ratcliffe, touched on, skate to stick, Cunningham, lofts it in, gets to the puck, throws it to the back, and out to center ice. A little more than three minutes gone, third period, 2-1 hat-tricks. Ratcliffe gains the line, slingshots one wide, and it escapes the, look, uh, escapes the zone. Berry. In stride, pressed on by Giuliano. And Colton reorganizes in his own zone. Rotundi, neutral ice, gets the red, wheels it in. McCullum stops it behind the net. And Berry throws it across the ice for Gonzalez. Ramped in by Woolley, hat trick skit changes. Milam, where's the A for the Rockers? Starts the rush. Patrick's clogging up in the neutral zone. LaBelle with Di Nicola. Back pass for Johnson. Was detected. Knocked away. Di Nicola gets back on it. Harwell. Sidesteps a Smith check. Three on two if they hurry. Harwell drops Johnson. Shoots. Scores! Deflected it in. Johnson second of the night. And the lead extended to two. Harwell leads the line. I believe he got a piece. Either way, it's three to one hat tricks. To be honest with you, Doug, I had a good feeling about that run. There was something about it. I felt that that lead was going to extend to the 3-1, to one, and sure enough, here we are. Now, Harwell was the first man on that line. That would signify that he got a piece of that. 
But the hat trick step in front by two. Vanderweel plays it down low. Rockers in the O zone. Shot deflected. McCollum's down. And a penalty on Yao. So a solid answer from the Rockers. A little bit of chaos in front. They draw a penalty. And they can get back within one. Again, an unfortunate situation here with Yao heading to the box, but again, had a pretty strong kill yesterday so far. So I think we're going to be able to kill this one off, and granted, we're on the momentum of this 3-1 to one lead here. Again, like I mentioned earlier, play that simple defense and don't get too flashy. Just the second power play of the series for the Rockers. Finished the regular season third on the man advantage behind just Columbus and Binghamton. Delaney, low left, Coash, wrap around, sends it to the back. Milam slap shot, whizzes wide, rebound Giuliano. Right point, McGill Diaz, back Milam, touches it near side, Delaney. Cross, McGill Diaz, Vanderweel in front, Delaney touched it wide, Vanderweel, shot stopped, and the rebound fought off again by McCollum. Rebound, ricochets near side. Up top, McGill Diaz for Milam, left point. McGill Diaz for Milam, one timer! Head high off the end glass. And Gonzalez clears. A minute to go on the Rockers' power play. Hattricks with a 3 1 lead. The goal credited to Johnson from Harwell and LaBelle, so give. Johnson, his second of the game. Bedard gets it to LaBelle, who cannot clear. 45 seconds of the power play. Coash across for Colton. Return Coash. They crisscross. Colton shot deflected off the back glass, pops in the air. Bedard dangles out of trouble and carries it out of the zone with 30 on the kill. Johnson shot, stop. Rebound, Bedard kick save by Babin. Bedard caught in the Ozone. Three hat tricks back with 20 on the kill. Pass in front. Colton's one timer, they score. I believe it hit off of LaBelle, who is standing to the left of McCullum. Power play goal for the Rockers, and they're back within one. Definitely an unfortunate scenario there, and another lapse in the defense, which you know cost us a pretty safe two-goal lead. However, again, there's still plenty of hockey left. 13 minutes, 25 seconds to be exact, and again, a resilient team here with the hat tricks. So I'm pretty confident that we can regain a lead and hold strong. Another tight affair that will most likely come down to the wire. Another unfortunate bounce for Connor McCullum. A nice pass from below the goal line. Found Colton open in the high slot. His first shot. It hit off of LaBelle and deflected past McCullum. Back to five on five hockey. So the Rockers one for two now on the power play in the series. McGill Diaz shot deflected wide. Spitznov twirling in the corner. To McGill, Diaz left point, walks the line, down low, Giuliano, shot stopped. A scramble in front, two players are down. Delaney is on top of Abdella. We play on, Giuliano. Pried the puck free, rimmed all the way around. Colton lost it to Abdella, who storms to the red line and throws it in deep. Bedard and Gulo in a race. Bedard spins off the check. LaBelle feathers it far side. Colton keeps. Wrist shot. Whistles wide. Bedard up the near side for Ratcliffe. Cross ice Berry. Through the legs. Partially got past Colton. They get stapled to the boards. And the Rockers come away with it. 
Under 12 to go, third period. Hattricks clinging to a one goal lead. These teams alternating goals in the third period. McCullum nearly turned the puck over behind the net. Finds Cunningham, kept in. Slap shot wobbles into the mitt of McCullum. And a timeout on the ice. Back and forth hockey. Goals from Johnson for the Hattricks. Colton for the Rockers. One goal game at Big Boy Arena in Frazier, Michigan. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Hattricks playoff hockey on the Hattricks Digital Network. Hope Plumbing offers a full range of commercial and residential services. Their team can assist you in all aspects of any plumbing-related needs you have. You have hope with Hope Plumbing. Kellogg Hardwood Lumber, located in Bethel, has the hardwoods for any project. They are a kiln-dried hardwood lumber yard and manufacturing facility carrying the highest quality hardwoods available. Flooring, moldings, cabinets, furniture, or whatever you are building, they have the kiln-dried hardwoods you need. Since 1881, Omaha Beef Company has been supplying the Danbury community with meat and beef. Located on Maple Avenue, they are now the featured product in the Danbury Ice Arena. When you say Omaha Beef Company, you mean top of the line. Bold Move Logistics is a family-owned and operated delivery service provider exclusively for Amazon. As a team, they deliver packages the last mile to your doorstep. Check them out on the concourse level at the Danbury Arena and inquire about joining their team. Alongside Patrick Fournette, I'm Doug Latuka. Second game of a best of three series. Rockers with a 1-0 lead. Overtime winners last night in Danbury. Hattricks with a one-goal advantage here in Michigan. Both teams have scored once in the period. Colton with the most recent goal on a deflection has Motor City back within one. Vanderweel backtracks, gave it away to Berry, has to wait for Woolley to touch up. Forfeits possession. And it's controlled by Fields. And will spun himself out of his skates. And Vanderweel charges left side. To the neutral zone, Vanderweel through the D! Got taken down, fans wanted a penalty. The net is off the peg. So a whistle regardless, as Brown was the last line of defense. And knocked the puck off of Vanderweel's stick. And again, that's one of those cases here with playoff hockey where it's the only call, like penalties that might injure a player those tripping calls and all that, they kind of just let the boys play, and that's really what adds to the feel of playoff hockey. You have to wonder how comfortable the Hattricks feel in this position. Remember the two overtime games between these sides. The Rockers came away with the wins, including last night. Hattricks, of course, have some championship pedigree, some champions on the ice right now have been there, done that before Motor City in the second year of operation. Of course, they have veterans on their squad as well. But Danbury, who has lost four of the last five games, including last night, trying to get back to its brand of hockey. Now, those losses have not been by large margins. Three of them were by one goal. Patrick's only outscored 17-15 during that lull. And surprise, surprise, a one-goal game here. Spitznov at center. Buck is deflected into the Hattrick's bench. And Danbury makes changes. So Johnson credited with two goals tonight. McKittrick with the other for the Hattricks. It's Sneath and Colton for the Rockers. Both of those players with goals last night for Motor City. So, a couple of reliable scorers for the Rockers have gotten the job done. And tonight, Colby Johnson's coming out party in the playoffs. First couple playoff points for the youngster. Pass thrown into the middle. Taking it around is King. McGill Diaz across. Milam slapper wide. Put in front and touch towards goal. 
McCollum steered to the side with the stick. McGill Diaz kept it. And then it was swatted out to center. LaBelle with the hat tricks changing. Fires it in. More than midway through the third period. Hattricks three, Rockers two. The Hattricks hold on game three tomorrow at 5.05 here at Big Boy Arena. Bouncing puck, fought for along the far boards. It spits out for Yao to Ratcliffe into the zone. Ready on the backhand, floats it into the catching mitt of Babin, and a whistle sets up an offensive zone faceoff for the Hattricks. When we come back, media timeout on the ice. Hattricks three, Rockers two. Stay with us. It's playoff hockey on the Hattricks Digital Network. Charter Oak Brewing Company is a Connecticut-based brewery featuring handcrafted and innovative beers such as pale ales, lagers. India Pale Ales, Brown Ales, Sours, and several seasonal, more robust beers. Pick one up at the Rabbit Hole. Danbury Pace, Chipman, Mizuko, and Emerson is your partner for the road ahead. They provide comprehensive legal guidance for individuals, families, and businesses. CME, let the pros handle your needs. Domino's, the official pizza of the Danbury Hattricks. Thin crust, pepperoni, sausage, you name the topping, and they got it. Domino's, they deliver. Partner with Fastenal to simplify and secure your supply chain needs. They handle a vast range of industrial products, and if you want it, they can get it. The core belief is in the people at Fastenal. They empower their teams to do great things for yours. Grounds Donut House is the featured donut of the Danbury Ice Arena. Stop by the main stand and grab yourself one of today's featured donuts. As good as it gets, donut miss out. Exactly nine minutes reading on the clock. Patrick's three. Rockers 2, the middle game of the best of three series. Hattricks need it to keep their season alive. Johnson right now with the go-ahead goal. Extended Danbury's lead to 3-1. to one. Colton responded about two minutes later to cut the deficit to one. Della paired with Gonzalez on defense. Barry, Woolley, and Ratcliffe for the forwards. Colton pursued by Woolley. Rims it around Rotundi. Gets it back behind the net. Colton, outlet for Delaney. Right through the middle, Spitznov. Couldn't corral McCullum out of the goal. Swats it up the far boards. And it goes out of play. So the faceoff coming in the offensive zone for the Rockers. And the hat tricks change. All five. Another tight one. Coming down to the finish line. Hat tricks desperate for the victory. Off the faceoff. Puck squirts near side. Johnson lifts it all the way down, a race for it. Icing waved off, Di Nicola and McGill Diaz were sprinting. Matrix get the call. You see the sense of urgency from the Hattrix too in the defensive zone. Get to pucks and move it forward, two on one. Di Nicola for Harwell, shoots, miss the net. He wristed it over the crossbar with Babin down, outstretched. So the game remains 3-2. Awkward bounce off a stanchion. At center, Colton, slap shot. Deflects off the stick of McCollum. Yao pressured, shielding the puck. Flips it on the backhand near side, and McKittrick floats it out to center. Love down by Colton, gets possession back. Tossed in by Sneath. Brown swerves out of trouble. Cunningham can't clear, Sneath shoots, blocked. McKittrick, outlet for Cunningham. Skates into it. Van on the shot, rolls towards Babin. 
who hands off for Vanderweel. Berry pokes it free. Gives possession of the Rockers. They toss it out to center with under seven left in the third period. One goal, Hattrick's lead. Tense times here at Big Boy Arena. Hattrick's keying in on the smart play with a one goal advantage. Giuliano fumbled at center. Woolley into the offensive zone. Fan on the shot. Perry takes it right back. Drops off LaBelle. Wrist shot blocked. Svitsov. Left wing. Across for Giuliano. Too far in front. Svitsnov shovels it on goal. McCullum loves it. And it forces a whistle. So the face off back. In the hat trick zone, with under six to play in regulation. And we could sense the hat tricks trying to play mistake free, and not give the Rockers any opportunity. A bunch of goals have come from point shots. A big face off here in the D zone. A tie up off the draw. Di Nicola wills it out to center. Johnson chasing after it. Vanderweel at the red line, avoids a check, flipped it in. McCollum rims it around. Di Nicola, cross ice, Johnson in stride. He'll get it deep. Vanderweel collided with Harwell. Smith leads the charge. It's Coash, left wing. Available puck. Danbury escapes the zone yet again. Cunningham for Harwell, back to Cunningham. Banged off of his leg pad. And we're at the five minute point. Third period. One goal, Hattrick's lead. So force game three tomorrow. Ruiz, left wing, cuts in, shoots! Didn't get all of it, slid off of his stick and wide. Ruiz back on it to McKittrick. Emerges in front, shoots, save, rebound in a slot. Conway comes away with it. McCullum out of the goal, they waved off icing. Abdella from behind the net. Lost an edge, but gets the puck out. Sneath has one of the two Rockers goals tonight. Sneath shoots, ramped. Over the net. Hattrick thought it hit the netting, but it stays in play. Milam with 410 in the far corner D zone. Flings it all the way down the ice, and it is an icing on the Rockers. And the final timeout on the ice. 404 left. Can the Hattricks hang on and get to a game three tomorrow? Well, stay with us to find out. We'll be right back on the Hattricks Digital Network. Tixer is the official ticketing partner of the Danbury Hattricks and Danbury Ice Arena. Log on and get your seats today. Great service and easy to use. Tri-State Legacy Group is an insurance group that focuses on putting your family needs first. Consult with them today and set your plan for the future. They care about people over products. It's that simple. Twister's Ice Cream Cafe. Located in New Fairfield, Twister's features 32 different flavors of ice cream. This season, they are stationed in the Danbury Ice Arena. Stop by and visit their stand. Get sprinkled. New Haven Nighthawk Brewing. Brewed right here in Connecticut and featured at the Rabbit Hole. New Haven Night Brewing Company is the beverage of choice at the Danbury Arena. Grab a cold one and party like you're in the Elm City. Patrick's clamping down in the final four minutes of the third period. Danbury holding on to a 3-2 lead. Right now, Johnson's goal at 421 is the go-ahead. Doug Latuka with Patrick Frenette. Second game of the best of three. Empire Division semifinals. The winner of this series plays Binghamton in the second round. Patrick's must win tonight. 
to keep things alive. Ozone faceoff, near circle. Patrick's win it. LaBelle tried to send it down the boards. Rockers take possession. Delaney and Bedard collide into the boards. Ratcliffe on the backhand, flubs it out to center. Pops in the air, Milam slaps it in. Wonder when Babin will head to the bench for the extra skater. Giuliano. Stand on the dump in, found the stick of Delaney. He's tied up with Ratcliffe. Out to center ice. Colton across Fitznow. Sends it in. Delaney lost his stick. So he went to retrieve it, and the whistle blew. Oh, it's a hat trick penalty. A slash on Berry and Motor City who has scored tonight on the power play. Gets a second crack at it and can tie the game. Rockers one for two on the power play this weekend. Third ranked in the regular season. Behind just Columbus and Binghamton and a timeout, Danbury, rather Motor, Motor City. City takes a timeout to talk things over before the five on four power play. Definitely an interesting situation here. I didn't even see the penalty to be honest. I'm not even saying that just out of. Well, Delaney's stick was down in the hat trick zone. Yep. So that must have been where it occurred. So we've seen a couple trips let go. Late stages a slash, stick goes flying and they give the hat tricks Bit of a bump in the road here on their way to getting to a game three. If you're just joining us, the Hattricks scored the opening goal, took a 3-1 lead early in the third period. About two minutes later, the Rockers got back within one, and that's where we stand. 3-2, 319 remaining. And the hat trick shorthanded for two minutes. Ruiz and Sneath for the faceoff. They'll put, they'll push the players outside the circle and redrop. Hat tricks win it, but Rockers possess. King switches spots with Conway. Near side King. To the point. Low right, back to Colton. King, left point. Return to Colton. The pass detected by Ruiz. There he goes, shorthanded. Koash getting back. Ruiz, backhander, scores! Shorthanded goal, Johnny Ruiz. The lead is back to two, and the hat trick so needed that one. As I like to say, Johnny read that play like a book. Able to go bat that into the neutral zone, chase after it, and get Babbitt on the shorthand. That patented backhander from Johnny Ruiz gets the job done again. Led the league in shorthanded goals with five. He's got his first shorty in the playoffs, and he pushes the lead back to two. Johnny Ruiz putting the hat tricks on his back. He wants that game three. Hat tricks still with some work to do. They have to kill off a minute 15. And two and a half left in the third. Delaney drops off from Milam. Low left in front. Glove save McCollum and the whistle. And back on the ice, Ruiz. Read the pass up top, knocked it down with the glove, was off to the races. And beat Babin, glove side on the backhand, second time he's done that in this series. I want to mention there's an empty net. 
Babin is on the bench. Six skaters on. It's a six on four for the next 55 seconds with Danbury shorthanded. Delaney right wing. Back for McGill Diaz. Shoot save. Rebound available. Swept all the way down. No icing because the hat tricks are on the kill. Ruiz heads to the bench. Johnson on. Rockers into the Ozone. Drop pass all the way down. A race for it. Johnson and McKill Diaz. A tie up. King and Johnson engaged behind the play. Here's Coash, left wing. Drops it off to the back. McGill Diaz play off sides and a shot after the whistle. Refs disperse the scrum. 16 seconds on the Berry penalty. Babin still out of the goal. For now, the faceoff just outside the hat trick zone. Right now, they have six on the ice. And Babin is back to the bench. So five on four, Babin is returned. Final seconds of the power play. Babin heads to the bench, extra skater on. Puck in front, goes through the crease. Ratcliffe chops it, knocked down with a high stick by Koash. So they blow it dead. Hattricks four, Rockers two, Johnny Ruiz with an insurance goal, short-handed. Backhand under the bar, unassisted at 17.09. As the Hattricks a minute 21 seconds away from forcing a game three. Gonzalez swipes at the puck, Ruiz on the backhand, out to center. Rolling puck with 110. Colton on the backhand. Floats it in, Gonzalez sprints after it. Presses it up along the kick plate. Colton trying to pry it free. Spits near corner. Under a minute to go. Coash shoot, save. Rebound, hop the stick of Colton. Ratcliffe off the glass, out to center. Final 50 of regulation. Rockers into the zone. Spitznob drops, shot off the shoulder of McCollum. Puck available. Here's Sneath, missed the net. Rims around, Milam, captain at the blue line. Floating puck, Sneath far side, centers for Spitznow. Hattricks throw it the length of the ice with 25 and icing on the Hattricks. So the face off all the way back in the Danbury zone with 24.3 on the clock. Conversation in front of the Hattricks bench about a potential change. Can't do it on an icing. The net is empty for the Rockers. They need two goals at 24.3. Oh, they're sending King to the box. Lane King is being sent off the ice. I believe it's an abuse of an official. There's no minor abuse of an official calls in the playoffs. So we'll get the official ruling. But the hat tricks. Six on five. King done for the game. Face off outside the hat trick zone. Off the draw, Abdella. Out to center, McGill Diaz. 
slings it in with 15. McCollum rims it around. Milam had the stick chopped out of his hands. It's a slash, and then Johnson took a tumble. Vanderwill skated by him. Well, Colby Johnson becoming a fan favorite. Very Here much big boy so. It looks like the hat tricks will be going back onto the kill. The good news for them, just 12.6 remaining, and Motor City needs two goals. But oh, we got a bit of a scrummage out here. Bedard chatting with Vanderweel. Now he has to be escorted away. Patrick's have seven players on the ice right now, and they're supposed to be shorthanded. And Billy McCreary calling for a timeout. Officials don't see him. And now they give it to him. Timeout hat tricks, 12.6 to go, and they're shorthanded with Johnson in the box for slashing. Definitely not the way you want to end the game, obviously. 12.6 seconds, that's, you know, short amount of time but again anything could really happen in this game of hockey in general so you really want to just kill this 12.6 seconds off worry about tomorrow and again this is something that I've seen kill the hat tricks throughout the season taking these penalties that really shouldn't be taken at all they're at the end of games you know and they kind of they, they've costed them a few times obviously we're hoping not here as they have a two goal lead at the moment so it's going to be interesting to see what Coach McCreary has in store for us for these last 12.6 seconds. Well, if they win the faceoff, they can go for the empty net without the risk of icing. Motor City intensely talking it over. Now, two goals in 12.6 would be nothing short of remarkable. They need a quick face-off win and a goal, and then practically a goal off the center ice face-off. Crucial face-off, Ruiz and Sneath. Swept to the corner, below the goal line. It's available with seven seconds. A scrum put in front, kick back behind the net. Final seconds, and that is it! The hat trick stay alive and force a game three here in Michigan. Johnny Ruiz with the insurance goal short handed at 1709 gave the hat trick some breathing room. But Colby Johnson, his second goal of the night, becomes the game winner. And we will see you tomorrow at 5.05 here at Big Boy Arena. What an electric way to end off this Saturday night. I mean, it, kind of what we've wanted all day. We've been talking about it. The vibes have been good in the room, especially when we got here. Everyone kind of felt comfortable. Granted, the loss, you know, they, they were able to sweep that under the rug pretty quickly, which you got to do in these playoff scenarios. So I'm happy for the hat tricks, and I'm happy to be back tomorrow for a game three. Another tight affair between the number two and three teams in the Empire Division during the regular season. This series has lived up to the billing. The winner tomorrow will square off with Binghamton in the second round of the playoffs. It would be the Empire Division Finals which would then send the winner to the Commissioner's Cup Finals. To the Hattricks, who lost a heartbreaker yesterday in overtime in game one, come back on the road and take one in Motor City's house. Game three is up for grabs, Pat. It's and the Hattricks might have found the formula. Defensively, 
one of their more complete games in the last couple of weekends. Now Motor City finished the game with 36 shots. Hattricks had 30, but the quality of shots from the Rockers, not nearly as good as what we saw last night. A lot from the outside, point shots. Motor City, couple of goals deflected, got through McCollum, but you'll live and die with that if you're the Hattricks. Avoid things in the middle and the slot. You know, point blank opportunities. And the Hattricks come away victorious. Big names coming through. Ruiz, of course, on the kill, as good as anyone. Johnson grabbing two tonight. Definitely and was not on my bingo card, but again, I'm always happy to see that kid score. I mean, he's he really is currently the Swiss Army knife for this team. If I had to argue, that's just my opinion. So the Hattricks get the job done on a Saturday night here in Frazier, Michigan. And that just means game three is set for tomorrow. And we'll be on the call at 5.05 here inside the Big Boy Arena. You can have the Rangers on the laptop, Hattricks on the big screen. How about that? I, I think that sounds good to you. I'm, I myself, part of Isles Nation, I'm, you know, not happy about today's loss, Look, but again... it did not come through on the broadcast side. You were spectacular <laughs> Thank you. in your professional hockey debut, Pat. Thank and you. we're excited to see what you have in store for your second broadcast tomorrow afternoon. Hattrick stay alive in a must-win situation. They get the job done. And Colby Johnson... <laughs> Colby Johnson with two goals. Johnny Ruiz with the cherry on top shorthanded. And Danbury lives to fight another day. All right, that just about does it for us here on the Hattricks Digital Network. One more game in the first round of the Empire Division semifinals. Winner will play Binghamton. We'll lay it all out for you tomorrow here on the Hattricks Digital Network. For everyone helping behind the scenes, Jordan Simmons on the social side. Patrick Fernet, as good as it gets, camera and color, multitasking. One of the best in the business right here. You, I'm sir. Doug Latuka saying have a great rest of your night, Hattricks fans. Soak up the win, and we'll talk again tomorrow, 5 o'clock puck drop, for a chance to advance to the second.